good mates. We've we've known each other for years. Uh, my missus is good pals with Andy and Craig's wife, so I go to bingo together. The the girls, no, not as and uh, Craig's wee ones go to the same school as mine. Uh, we all live near each other. We drink together, go out together. Steve's obviously the one with the issues because he's an Arsenal supporter. <laughs> me, and you, me and Craig were this was supporters. Aye, so Craig was late on the day. Uh, he was our designated driver. So to save time, me and Andy started to get our kit on. 20 minutes we were waiting there, we were freezing. But it wasn't the first time we'd been late. Bloody hell! I was rushing because I got up late. I was legging it to get to the lads. <sighs> keys! Keys, where's my keys? Oh, you're the no, it's just... Yeah. Hey, they're going to be after them. No! Hey, gotta go. Bye, love you. <sighs> Myself, Steve and Craig were all self-employed. Hi Rui, what time did you call this? Sorry lads. Yeah, I was clean shaving when I got up this morning. Uh, we're working for our civil engineering, structural repair and refurbishment subcontractor. Uh, we got there at 8.25. We should have got there at 8. Hurry up! We're in a serious rush to get our acts together to get on site. Craig, hurry up, the link was you, me! On the day, we were to dig in the front of the site, installing new flagpoles for Kia. We were to dig within the site boundary, uh, next to the vehicle access gate, which binds the high street. We were to dig on the east side of the gate first. We started digging, but there was this one particular hole that caused us a bit of trouble, but it was easy enough to begin with because the ground was so soft. Come on! He's struggling! Come on! He's a hander! It was a right stubborn bugger, See? but uh, between the three of us, we were just chipping away at See? it. It's pretty tough, I told you. Uh, we got down to about 450mm. Uh, we found out there were stones and rocks underneath, so we took turns to the pinch bar just to lever them out. Craig used a orange insulated shovel. It wasn't a Kia one, but it was just your basic subcontractor's one. So we had to hand it at the time. So then Craig started to remove the excavated earth with the double shovel. The only problem was the soil just kept falling back in. It's not really doing much, mate. Yeah, but. Because of the double shovel wasn't doing a good job, uh, Craig went away to get a bag to kneel on, dropped it beside the hole, knelt on it, and started using his hands to remove the soil. He then went back to the insulated shovel just to get more depth, but the ground, the ground was getting harder, so he was struggling. Uh, so he went back on his knees and started using his hands to brush away any more soil, just to get a better look at what the obstruction was. What do you think, guys? I'm not sure. I reckon that's for an old fence post. Craig was still uh, kneeling on the bag, just, just trying to dig out the last 100mm of concrete with a pinch bar. I was stood behind him and Andy was just stood in front, looking, looking straight at him. Craig put in a dig and, and suddenly, that's when all hell broke loose. I never knew there was an 11 kVA cable under there. see something like that you just feel a bit helpless I just, I, I don't know what happened it was just it was just a bang and then a flash and Craig was there and Steve I, I, I don't know I don't know what to do I just I I ran to Kier's um first aid up Claire she was she was brilliant she was reassuring him like it's gonna be okay everything's fine because he was in some state but 
we all were. She got a, a cleaner, uh, to get a, like a wet cloth and hold it on his face and uh, the screams from him and I, I felt a bit helpless. Just, just sat. When I walked in and saw him lying in that hospital bed, my heart went through my mouth. You try to prepare yourself, but nothing can take away the shock seeing him like that. The burns on that heart monitor, I thought the worst. When they were transferring him to the specialist burns unit, I didn't know what was going to happen. My head was imagining all kinds of things. I wondered whether this was it. Was the kids ever going to see their dad again? Was I? I've gotten back and that's all I care about. I never want to go through that again. So as you can see, um, I've came away, came away from it with uh, quite a lot of superficial burns, mostly on the right side of my body, um, my face especially. Cheeks, nose, lips, a little bit here, my ear. Um, I've got a kind of smaller one here on the underside of my wrist, um, same on my left as well. There's a very, very re weird one just at the, my, uh, my wedding finger. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, to. Yeah, I'm lucky to be alive. Um, doctors said it could have been a lot worse. Um, you know, it's... I just can't get it out of my head, basically. Um, just keep replaying it. It's difficult, it's difficult to sleep, eat, concentrate. There are moments I can, but right when I think I've got it slushed out, it kind of sneaks back up on me. I'm lucky to be alive, I mean, I, I know that. Just the, the thought of not being able to see my wife and kids again, it's I'm still here. End of the day.